Hi, this is Cheryl. I am here tonight to give my testimony about God delivering me from homosexuality. So I haven't shared this story in the past. I have shared my testimony about God delivering me from all of the hallucinogens in the New Age, but I have not given my testimony about homosexuality. And I'm not sure why I haven't. I think partially it was um, fear of rejection from others. Um, but I want to give this testimony because I want to show other people what God can do in your life when you surrender to Him and what Jesus Christ can do when you surrender to Him. And so um, I'll just tell you a little bit about my background. So I... Um, I dated a guy for five years in high school, and after that, um, after I broke up with him, I started struggling with my sexuality. I had struggled with it a little bit in high school, and um, was never really able to figure out what it was all about because I was never with another woman during high school. But um, anyway, I wanted to be, but I was not, and so that's a good thing. God protected me from that at that age. And then um, I got out of that relationship and I um, was a little promiscuous with men at that time uh, after my breakup with this um, particular person. And um, during that time I had a sexual encounter with a woman and um, so I began to think that I liked women more than I liked men sexually. And I ended up living as a lesbian for 29 years. And um, during that time, I had a partner for 23 years of that. So I was in a relationship for 23 years of that. But there were several years on both sides of that where I was single and um, was dating women. And what happened was, is last year, um, I gave my life to the Lord in November. And then between November and February, I was really um, studying the Bible and just um, learning about who God was again. And um, in February, I decided to get baptized. And um, prior to me getting baptized, at least I'm, I'm trying to remember this, I'm pretty sure that it was prior to me getting baptized. Um, so sometime at the beginning of this year, a friend of mine and I were talking and we had been talking consistently about surrendering to God and surrendering, surrendering to Jesus. And my friend said to me, um, Cheryl, you haven't surrendered everything to God. And so I began to look at my life and began to look at the fact that I had not surrendered my sexuality to God. And he talked to me about that. A little bit and um, I decided one day I just got up and I don't know what came over me but I had been thinking about it for a while and I got up and I said God I'm giving this to you I don't want to live this way anymore I don't want to do this anymore and so I gave it to God and um, that's been a while because it's now August and so um, I have lived over the last probably eight months um, in a new life and that is this that I am um, not sexually attracted to or sexually driven by women at all anymore and I am um, I am just um, I can look at a woman and I can see her and you know think you know, hey, you know, she's pretty or she's got nice arms or whatever else, but there's, it never goes beyond that. It is just always just like a, a, um, just a way of seeing people like I see everybody else, like I see men or any other person. So, um, it's a, it's really been freeing because God has really given me the freedom from that, from, from all of that, uh, the things of my past. And, um, I want, I wanted you to know how I came to this and how I really decided to do this. And it was really through my study of the Word. So I began going through the New Testament. I decided that I was going to read the Bible all the way through for the first time. And I began going through the New Testament and then I went through the Old Testament after that. 
But while I was going through the New Testament, there was just some things in the Bible that really stuck out to me. And um, I've gone through and, and uh, made a list of some scriptures. And tonight I'm just going to go over a few of them with you. So um, I just want everyone to know why I came to this because, you know, the Word of God is where we're supposed to look for, for the answers in our life. And we're supposed to follow what God wants us to do and not what we ourselves want to do. So I'm going to share with you some of the scriptures and then I'm going to, I'm going to tell you some other stuff after that. In Galatians 5.19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So um, that's a really good scripture there. And it, what does it say? It says that people who practice those things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And... Um, uh, homosexuality would come under the category of immorality or fornication and so that that scripture specifically says fornication and it says lewdness so um, homosexuality does fall in that category I'm gonna read you another text from 1 Thessalonians 4 3 it says for this is the will of God your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. And we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. That right there basically says that if you do not accept this, that you are rejecting God, which is the spirit of rebellion. So we are rebelling against God if we choose to be in a homosexual lifestyle because it is rebellion against what God's word says. And there's a number of scriptures in the Bible which many people twist who are... Um, for homosexuality and, and claim that the Bible does allow for it. That is wrong. That is a lie from Satan himself. And I will tell you that any church, any person that believes that does not believe sound doctrine. So I'm going to go to the next verse, which is 1 Corinthians 7-2. And there's a number of these in Corinthians. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Now, this was Paul talking to the Corinthian church about the principles of marriage. There was so much immorality in that church at the time that he was basically saying each man needs to have his own wife and each woman needs to have her own husband, which is actually a reflection of how God created us in the Garden of Eden when he created Adam and then he created Eve. And he set that up as the perfect partnership, the perfect marriage. And so um, that is how we need to live our life, is by that guide. Um, the next one is, let's see, Ephesians 5.5. 5. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, covetousness, let it not be even named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. And then it says, um, For you once were in darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. 
for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So, folks, as Christians, we need to be willing to expose the lies of the enemy. We need to be willing to expose how people and the enemy will tw twist scriptures to go against what God has set, for, uh, set up for us to do. And we need to be willing to follow what God commands us to do and not what we want to do. So those are just some of the scriptures that I, um, that I had. And um, I want to tell you what I discovered when I read these scriptures for myself. And that is, I came to the conclusion that I, like so many people, was justifying my sin. And what I was doing was, I was saying to God, God, I know that this is a sin, because the Bible says that it is a sin, and I wanted to deny that it was a sin, because I kind of... I had gone to a gay church and I had kind of been indoctrinated with that philosophy like, well, all of this stuff just has to do with, you know, worship of other gods or temple prostitution or all of that. And all of that is a lie. Um, so I had come to that, you know, I had come to that conclusion when I was in, in church a long time ago. But now reading through this, I realized I was justifying my sin and telling God, I know that all of these other things are sin, but I want you to set me apart, set me over here, set me apart because I think that I think that I am this way, and because I think that I am this way, I think it's okay for me to sin. And um, I know that you know, I, I, at, when I was in a relationship, for example, I mean, it's not like gay people are having sex all the time. A lot of gay people don't have sex all the time, if at all. But the, the point of it is, is that we are living a life that is contrary to what God's Word says. And that is an abomination. And so I came to this conclusion, God, I'm asking you to set me apart. I know that all these other people sin. They're committing adultery and they're doing all of these other things. But I want you to set homosexuality over here to the side and say, this is okay and it's acceptable because people think that this is who they are and people think that this is what they are. And so that is wrong because justifying sin never works. God does not allow us to justify our sin. God ex expects us to look at the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to study the Word of God, and to know what the Word of God says about a particular subject. And about the subject of homosexuality, it is immorality. And it is not, if you're living that life, you are not living according to the, to the Bible. And so um, the thing is, is that the Bible talks, you know, about, you know, women exchanging natural relations and men exchanging natural relations for each other. There's a verse in there, and I didn't, I didn't share that with you, but I think most of you know what I'm talking about where it says men exchange natural relations with other men and women exchange natural relations with other women. So natural is not what feels natural to me. What is, it is what is natural to God. The way it was designed, the way that he designed it, not my interpretation of what feels good or natural to me. It is God's design. God is the one who created all of nature. So God is what is natural. And the way that he designed us to be in relationship with one another is what is natural. God's design for sex is within marriage only. So anyone who has any type of immorality, who has any type of sex or sexual uh, uh, conduct outside of marriage is committing immorality. It's the sin of immorality. So um, that, the Bible says, is an abomination. It is a sin against God. And here's the thing. We need to repent. We are a nation. We are a world who has taken away the things out of the Bible. We have abandoned what God has told us to do. And we have gone and we have rebelled and we have become prideful. And now we are... Um, basically saying, God, I know what's best for my life. You don't know what's best for me. 
God always knows what's best for me. His ways are perfect. The Bible says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So there's no way that here on earth we can ever know uh, or we can ever think that we're going to determine what God already knows to be right or wrong. We don't, we, God has already given us the template for that and all we have to do is obey his template for our lives and everything will be, everything will work out for us. But it is when we go against what God says, when we rebel against what God says and we think we know what is best, that is when we start sinning and we start committing adultery. And I'm telling people right now, it is time to wake up it is time for the homosexual community to hear the word of God. We need people from the church. We need disciples of Christ out sharing the word of God with homosexuals. And homosexual people uh, have a, 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 an issue right now. And I believe that it is a demonic stronghold that has attacked the homosexual community. In addition to homosexuality itself, there is a demonic stronghold of hatred upon the gay community because so many gay people hate the church, they hate Christians, they hate Christianity, they hate God, they hate Jesus. And it is time, homosexuals, for you to wake up. And I mean, you're my brothers and sisters, I love you. But it is time to wake up and it is time to do what God has called you to do. It is time to live the life that God has called you to live. And it is time to put all of the old away and let God bring about the new in your life because God expects us to do what he asks us to do. He is a loving father. He is gracious. He is merciful. He is kind. And he wants what's best for our lives. He knows what's best for our lives. We do not know what's best for our lives. We think we do, but when we do, we are in rebellion. And rebellion, the Bible says, is the spirit of witchcraft, meaning it is turning away from God and committing idolatry in addition to, to being homosexual and committing immorality, it is, is, it is idolatry. So it's time for people to wake up and it's time for um, people to know what the Word of God says. If you want to know about God, you need to open your Bible, you need to read it, you need to study it, and you need to let the Holy Spirit convict your heart because when you begin to read the Bible, the Holy Spirit will convict you of these things the same way the Holy Spirit convicted me of this. And all it takes is getting in the Word of God. All it takes is praying. And all it takes is asking God to show you and to reveal to you what He wants you to know about this subject. And He will tell you. So I am just urging everyone to understand that if, you know, we have got to um, take away all of these satanic lies about what the Bible says or doesn't say about homosexuality and we've got to go straight to the Word of God and know what it says and understand what it says, read what it says and tell other people what it says. And I'm the first one to say that I confess to God because I have not been willing to share this uh, with many of my friends because most of my old friends are still in the homosexual community and they are still living this lifestyle. And I want them to know about Jesus Christ and I want them to know what Jesus Christ can do in their life and that he can change them. That all they have to do is be willing to accept God and accept Jesus, accept Jesus as their Savior, get in the Word of God, study it, and learn what it says. Because God is always, um, he is always right about everything. He is a sovereign God. He knows everything about what we need in our lives and he created all of these um, uh, he created these uh, like man and woman like husband and wife because he knew that's what was best he knew that we needed each other he didn't create woman and woman because that wouldn't that wasn't his plan so let's not go and take and try to do our own plan when God himself set up nature and set up his creation in a specific way and so I just want to encourage everyone to get in the Word and to um, learn what the Word of God says. And I want you to know that um, God is a loving God. He is a sovereign God. And if you come to Him and you repent, 
and you tell him that you're sorry and you ask for forgiveness, he will forgive you. Jesus' blood covers all sins. And so I just want to tell you that Jesus has, is your Savior. He died on the cross and he died to save you from those sins, to free you from those sins, and to take all of those sins away out of your past so that you can live a completely new life in him. And um, I just hope that this is a blessing and that someone out there needed to hear this. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.